934 now. A major bank with ties to the Queen City hit with not one but two class action lawsuits following an alleged cyber attack. The first filed in North Carolina federal court this past Saturday, the other on Monday. Both lawsuits claiming Ally Bank was negligent in protecting hundreds of customers' private information. Queen City News Chief Business Correspondent Taylor Young has been combing through the court filings. And Taylor, the lawsuits could set a major precedent for how companies handle these types of data breaches. Yeah, you know, every week it seems that we are reporting on another company that was impacted by a cyber attack. And in many of these cases, it's the private information of the company's customers or users that end up on the dark web. Now, what we are seeing right now is a group of of private citizens filing a lawsuit saying that this could have and should have been prevented and Ally Bank should be held responsible for the alleged breach. Now, these two lawsuits filed within days of each other are very similar. They recount a reported cyber attack against Ally Bank. One lawsuit claims the bank found out about the breach in mid-July, the other on August 1st. Now, in both lawsuits, the plaintiffs say their private information like names, addresses, phone numbers, and social security numbers were accessed by an unauthorized actor, a.k.a. cyber criminals. The class members in both cases allege that allies should have known the risk that financial institutions face with the rise in cyber crime and that the bank failed to properly protect them. I spoke with a cyber, uh, cyber security expert in Charlotte who says, while companies are also a victim when breaches like this happen, they have the responsibility both ethically and legally to protect consumers' personal information. You should be expecting that someone is going to try to steal that data because people's personal information is valuable. When you're expecting that to happen, if you are not consistently taking a look at your plan that you have in place and reorganizing and rebuilding and testing and assessing and putting better measures in place, you are more vulnerable. Now, the lawsuit also accuses Ally Bank of failing to comply with the FTC guidelines. Both court filings are requesting that the bank pay impacted consumers. Now, I did reach out to Ally Bank regarding the lawsuit, and I have not heard back. Now, we know, Taylor, that there are, uh, let's see, we've got two lawsuits on the table. Could Ally also face potential fines? from regulators? I mean, it absolutely could. So the FTC mandates that these companies protect their consumer data. That's under the safeguards rule. And what these requirements are is they include uh, email security, which is a big way that these companies do get hit. That's, we don't know if that's the case here, but that is a massive um, risk that companies have is with the emails that come in and out. We get them here in the newsroom. We know to avoid them. Also, data encryption. And then lastly, letting uh, impactors, impacted customers know in a timely manner and, of course, failing to comply with these requirements um, can lead to hefty fines and lawsuits like the ones that we're covering right now. I mean, these measures are there to protect data, minimize risk, and lastly, I mean, get businesses back up and running as quickly as possible. But, you know, at the end of the day, and I did speak with a cyber expert about this, you cannot 100% prevent a data breach from happening. We know these criminals are only getting smarter. We see more and more companies being impacted by this. The goal, however, is to maintain, uh, to minimize rather their damage to your company and the customers if they are impacted. And unfortunately, cybersecurity experts say if companies are hit once, the chances of it happening again uh, rapidly increase. And Taylor, we've seen this time and time again, major corporations targeted by cyber criminals. How is this impacting some smaller businesses? Are they targets as well? Well, we know that last year an estimated 3,200 uh, cyber attacks happened. That's an 80% increase from just the year before. And I think what is the most shocking uh, data from all of this is that 50% of those cyber attacks actually happened to small businesses. And the cyber expert that I spoke with, she says, with the small businesses that they work with, many of them are actually unaware that they have to follow the same exact FTC guidelines that these big corporations are dealing with. So not only are they at a high risk of a cyber attack, but they could also be facing fines. They could also be facing lawsuits if a breach does happen. Um, so yeah, I mean, again, both major corporations, both small businesses, they all are vulnerable to these breaches. And unfortunately, it can lead to paying out a lot of money to people who are impacted, but also to regulators. All right, Taylor, thank you. Some of you don't think about the small businesses also impacted.